Hello everybody, welcome to my channel. Today we have a very, very good problem for you guys called subarray sum equals k. We actually have a very, very good problem. So make sure you pay close attention, all right? So the problem statement says, given an array of integer nums and integer k, right? Return the total number of subarrays whose sum equals k, okay? So he says a subarray is a contiguous non-empty sequence of elements within an array, right? So it's a very good and concise problem statement, right? So you're telling us that we are given an array and an integer k, right? As you, can, as you can see. And our job, right, is to find the number of subarrays, right? You know, what's a subarray, right? That's kind of uh, the important thing to understand, right? So, and they've given us these, uh, they've given us this um, definition, right, which is pretty convenient for us, right? So they're telling us that subarray is a contiguous non empty sequence of elements, right? Within an array. So we have a uh, multiple subarrays here and this particular uh, array right here, right? You know? That's a subarray. That's another subarray right there, right? And this as well is another subarray, right? You know, so those are the possible subarrays, right? So this element, this element, they're not subarrays, right? Because they're not contiguous, right? So they have to be right next to each other, guys, for it to be considered a subarray, all right? So now that we get this out of the way, so um, so you can see that we're given this verbal k, right? And this verbal k is pretty much telling up the target sum, right? That a subarray should have for it to be uh for it to be uh you know so if, if a subarray has a sum of k right meaning that the, all the elements in that subarray equals to the sum right if you set up all the elements in that subarray and their sum equals to the k right then we can say that uh, if it equals k right we can say that it, it's uh it's one subarray that equals that right so our job is to count all of the different ones, right? And then return the answer, right? So for this particular example, right? We need to find all the subarrays whose sum equals to two, right? So we see that those subarray, those, that sum equals two, right? Because one plus one is two. And this subarray as well, right? That sum equals two as well, right? And uh, so that's two different subarrays, right? In this example, uh, it's the same thing, guys. We check the different subarrays, right? So. This subarray, that's a subarray right there that equals two to three. And this subarray itself, right, is a subarray that equals to three as well. So they're by themselves equals to three. So that's what we turn two, right? So we have two different subarrays, right? So um yeah, so you can see it's very, very simple, right? We just need to count the number of subarrays and return the number of subarrays that has have a sum that equals to k. Okay. So how do we solve it, guys? Right? You know, how do we solve it? So normally we normally like to start off with the brute force solutions, right? No, non clever and pretty much intuitive solution, right? Right off the bat, right? So to kind of get the the thoughts flowing, right? So what I'm thinking here, right? You know, since we need to find a different subarray, right, is to calculate every possible subarray, right? So what do we would have, we would have a, a um for each index, right? We would calculate every subarray, right? You know, starting at that index, right? So we would at index one, we check this one equals to k, right? We check this one equals to k, right? And then we check the whole array, right, equals to k, right? Uh, and every time we encounter a uh, uh, subarray with sum equals to k, right? We just do a plus one and a counter, right? That we're gonna have, right? And then do that. And then for this one, we do the same thing. We check this subarray equals k, nope. And this subarray equals k, nope. Yes, and then we just do plus one, right? So as easy as that, right? Is how it would be straightforward way, right? So obviously you can tell this is not a very efficient solution, right? This would not be efficient, especially for large data sets, right? So very just a major drawback here. And most likely everyone won't accept this solution, right? You might say, oh, I'm good to go, but you know, most likely it might not let you slide with this, uh, you know, not very optimized solution, right? So we gotta be better than that, right? So to solve this problem, right? There's a little bit of things that you need to make sure you understand guys, right? Uh, very important concept, right? So we need to efficiently do that, right? So let's go to a drawing board, right? Let's kind of, you know, come up with different solutions, uh, approaches, right? You know, uh, let's go through that right now. So uh, yeah, guys, welcome to my drawing board now. So uh, we need to come up with a particular uh, solution, right? To solve this problem, right, we're gonna need to introduce you guys to a preferred important concept, which is the concept of prefix sums, guys, right? Uh, cumulative sum, whatever you wanna call it, guys, right? It's a very, very efficient way to solve those kind of problems where you need to, calculate uh sums right of subarrays and quickly be able to do that right uh in the lowest time complexity as possible see this is why it's uh, very useful for you guys right we did a problem similar to that 
it kind of a, it was a good introduction to the, the whole concept of running sum, right? Of cumulative sum, right? So essentially, what it is, right? Array sum for every index, right? Is the sum of all the elements from the beginning of the array up to and including that index, right? So for index one, uh, so if we were to calculate the cumulative sum, right? The prefix sum for this array, right? You know, so the first index, since it's the first element, right, equals one, and the second index, right? You know, we add all the elements from the beginning, right? Which is one plus one and including that, right? So then that's two. And then we have this other one, right? Which is the last one, which is three, guys, right? So this is the prefix sum, the cumulative sum array of this array, guys, right? So as easy as that, right? So very, very easy concept, right? So how is this going to be useful in solving it? That's what we're probably asking, guys, right? So it's going to be useful, guys, right? Because, you know, um, so let's say, for example, a very important concept for uh, getting the sum of, you know, a particular sub array. And let's say you have an I and a J, right? Right, and you want to know the the sum of that subarray, right? For whichever subarray that you want to get to, you want to get the sum array of this one, right? Or you want to get subarray of this one, like up to you, right? You could quickly do that. Uh, uh get that sum of subarray, right? I meant to do. Right? If you want to get the sum of this one, or you want to get the sum of that one, right? Up to you, high root, whichever subarray you want, right? You could easily do that by using this uh very important it's on formula, and I'm gonna tell you guys exactly how it's derived, right? So it kind of makes sense to you guys, right? So so the prefix sum, right? So let's say you want to get the prefix sum for i and j. Let's say this is i and this is j, right? Okay. I want to make sure you get that there, right. And you want to, you want to know the, the the sum of that subarray, right? You know. So how you would do that, guys, right? You just get the if you have the prefix sum at j, right? Okay. So whatever the prefix sum at j is, right? You subtract all the elements, right? The prefix sum of all the elements before i, right? Which is the lower bound, right? So oh, before I, so I do I minus one, right? And by doing that, we, we subtract all the elements from before I, right? Because we don't want to include, right? Because we know the prefix sum at index J, right? Includes all the elements from the beginning of the array up to that element, right? So because we only want I and J, right? We could we have to subtract all the elements that come before, right? Before I, right? So that's what we're doing here. We're subtracting that, right? So we do I minus one, right? Because we don't want those elements. And uh, the prefix sum of J, right? Because the prefix sum of J contains the sum of all the elements from the beginning of the array up to J, right? You know, and that's what we do in the subtraction, right? Just want to make sure it makes sense to you guys, right? Uh, the subtraction that we're doing, right? So we want to remove from J all the elements that um that come before I, right? Which is not part of the subarray that we want, right? So that's what we do, right? So this formula is important, right? Keep that in mind. So the next thing, right? You know, the is going to be helpful, right? So if we can find, right, so, right, if we could find the prefix sum of J, right, minus a previous prefix sum, right, and that uh, happens to equal K, guys, right, the difference of, uh, the difference and sum, right, equals K, right, that tells us that subarray has a sum that equals K, right, this is what the, we're coming with that conclusion, guys, right, so, because we know that by subtracting the different prefix sums, guys, right, and if we get a particular sum, that pretty much tells us the sum of those, um, sum of that subarray, right? And that's why we end up with this, guys, right? So if we have two different, uh, if we have uh, two different perfect sums, right, and we subtract it, and it gives us k, then we know that this subarray has a sum of k, guys, right? So it's good. We could do a so yeah, for this example, right? So we wanted to know the perfect sum of i and j, right? We could easily do that by just doing what the formulas here, right? We just do three, right? Which is the prefix at Prefix, prefix sum j, right, and then minus the, the prefix sum of i minus 1, right, so we're removing all the elements before i, right, so before i is 1, right, and that's what we can get two guys, right, so the same example that we uh, did before, right, so it's easy as that, right, this formula actually works, right, we could easily get the, uh, you see that this subarray of i and j, which is, you know, from index 1 to 2, uh, as a sub, as a sum that equals to k, right, so this is what we have here, guys, right, pretty, pretty simple, right, Okay, so now for each index, guys, right? So what we're gonna do, guys, right? We're gonna need to. So what we're gonna have to do, guys, is to be more efficient, right? You no, know, since the time complexity that we had earlier was n squared, guys, we need to kind of bring it down, right? Because the interviewer won't let this slide. So what we need to do is maybe introduce some kind of a data structure, guys, right? To kind of help us in reducing the time complexity, right? A lot more, right? And including this prefix sum somehow, right? So what I'm thinking is we could have a data structure that can help us to re, uh, remember 
different prefix sums that we've seen, right? Every index, right? And we could do a linear loop theory array. And as we're doing the linear loop, we're going to refer to that data structure, right? For a particular prefix sum, right? Because we know that for each prefix sum, right? Minus some other prefix sum, previous prefix sum you can refer to, right? Which is the lower bound, right? If the difference equals to K, right? That tells us guys, right? That that we talk about the prefix sum, right? If their prefix sum, if we're subtracting their prefix sums, right? And it equals to K, it tells us pretty much that that particular subarray, right? Between I and J uh, contains uh, as a sum that equals to K, guys, right? And that's why by, you know, for, for each index, right? We're going to know two things for sure, right? We're going to know the prefix sum at J so far, right? And the, and the variable K, right? And we just need to refer to that other uh, prefix sum, right? That occurred for, right? The previous, like some part of the array, right? It doesn't matter, right? So that's why by, re, we're, by rearranging the variables, right? You know, we're going to, so it's pretty much the X that we're looking for, right? And so in the data structure, right? We're going to be adding the prefix sum, uh, each prefix sum in some kind of data structure, right? The data structure of choice to easily be able to refer to them, right? In, in pretty much constant time, guys, right? That's what the map is going to be useful, right? Uh, I'm using a map, right? Because we, guys, we also need to keep track of the occurrences of how many times those prefix sum they have occurred, right? Because a particular running sum can occur many different times, guys, right? So, because we can't have negatives here and there, right? that's why we need to uh, take care of that, right? So, um, so by because all of, all of those different pre previous prefix sums, right, that I'm looking for that are in the array, right? All subtracting, you know. Uh, all the subarrays would have potentially be possible candidates for would be candidates pretty much for making sure that we take into account all the different subarrays that have a sum that equals to k guys right so and I'll, let's quickly go through an example so it kind of makes sense to you guys right so um so we're gonna start with zero right so zero equals one right so this is a case a base case guys right? very important because it allows us to take care of the case where or we're counting a subarray that starts at the beginning of the array, right? That's what we need to do that, right? So pretty much telling us that this is the sum uh, before uh, the start of the array, right? Pretty much what it, it's doing there, right? No. That's why we have this at the beginning, zero equals one, right? So uh, you'll see in the example why, why that's needed, right? So as we we're, we're saying, guys, right? We loop through the array, right? And we are count. So the first index, we're at one, right? The sum is one. And then we go on. We look for one, right? Minus k, right, which is negative one, guys, right? So we check, is there a negative one in the map? No. No, there's no negative one in the map, right? So uh, that doesn't work, right? So what we're going to do next is to add that sum in the uh, map, right? And then we continue, guys, right? And then we look for, we go on to the next one, right? We check the prefix sum so far at index two, right? It's going to be uh, index one. It's going to be two, guys, right? So we check for two minus k, right, which is two which is zero guys, right? Okay. And she's just you could do it if this is the formula, right? So pretty much the running sum at index J, right? And then minus the prefix sum of I minus one, right? And I minus one, right? Is, right, is zero, right? Because, you know, that's the base case, right? So, and that's how we can do this, right? So we see we have two minus two, right? Which is goes to zero and we have zero in the map. So that's one, just one subarray that we take to account, right? And the counter that we're going to keep, that's going to help us keep track is going to be one, right? So far, right? One, okay? And then we continue, guys. We go on to the next element. So we go three, right? And then we put two on the map as well before we go to next, right? And we do three minus two. And we find it in the map, which is equals to one, right? And there's a one in the map. So because of that, we know that this subarray, right? That's one more subarray that's formed that equals to k, guys, right? So that's why we, now we increment the count to 2, right? As simple as that, guys, right? So you can see it's a very, very simple uh, approach. So, um, yeah, I think the code will make it a lot more intuitive, guys, right? So uh, we see that we have a map to remember the, all the different subarrays, right? The prefix sums, right? All the different running sum that we see, right? Because we know what by looping through, by doing a linear loop, right? And for every running sum we check, is there a uh, running sum so far at minus k, right? Which means that, you know, if we if that exists in the map, that pretty much tells us that um this other prefix sum and my sum are different, right? Between i and j, right? And using this formula, right, we can uh, get the uh, 
the sum right of that sub rate in constant time right by looking at it in the map right instead of having to have to, to do a double full loop right and things like that right so a very very kind of uh, tricky problems but you know once you go through it several times you think it kind of kind of makes sense uh a little bit after right so let's quickly jump into the code so yeah guys well the code will be even a lot simpler than uh, the explanation right hopefully so i'm um, if i did a good job explaining it or not right and uh, give me some feedback and we can do better next time right so what we're gonna do we're gonna have integer to integer so this is the what's gonna like, keep track of all the different running sums that we've encountered right and we have our base case guys which is zero occurring one time right to to get to the case where the the subarray right starts from the beginning of the array right um that's what we're doing this right to account for those particular cases right that's why we do this here all right because you know zero is you know the sum of all the elements before the start of the array right that's pretty much what this is saying there i just want to make sure it makes sense okay and then we're going to do a linear loop guys right and through the array right so we're going to have a count variable Um, yeah, and then a count variable, we're going to have what else we're going to need to have a running sum, right? We need running sum so far. And now we're going to have, uh, so for each number, we're going to loop through. Okay. And what we're going to do is to do running sum. So for each index, right, we're going to just add it to our running sum, right? So initially it's zero, then we're equals to one now, right? And then now the next thing to do is to get, I mean, get all the different times it has occurred, guys, right? So to make it even more intuitive, right? Is to just get the running sum. Let me just do that so it makes more sense. So we check for it in the map, guys, right? If it contains the running sum, minus k, right? Because it's very similar to the problem that we've done, right? Which is the two sum problem, right? Then we do amount that get how many times it has occurred, right? Pretty much in the array, right? And it's pretty much right. We're looking for that value in the map, right? So if we find that, we just get all the different occurrences of that, right? Because those are candidates for sub, like, you know, to help me to calculate sub arrays between those two, right? Um, yeah, so after that, what we do is to put map that puts that running sum. Get our default running sum plus one. Okay, and after that, what we do, we just return the count. And we're in good shape, right? So we have a map and we start with our base case right here. And then we have a count variable to help us to keep track of all the different occurrences of, you know, sub arrays that have a sum that equals to K, right? And that's why we keep doing that, right? And um, yeah, so let's press run code, see if we pass the small test case, press submit. Awesome, guys, we're about to pass all the test cases, guys. If you guys found value and you guys enjoyed this video, let me know that in the comment section. If you guys are new here, make sure to subscribe because we'll be doing a lot of other videos just like this one. So I want to. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next.